important question of the day. What is the Federal Reserve is going to do today at 2 p.m.? Guys, I'll give you the simple answer. There's going to be no damn rate cut. Forget about it. All the hype in the media. We're going to bring all these myths and slice them to portals of reality in this video. So stay tuned. This video is specifically designed for those that trade actively. If you're an active trader, swing trader, day trader, okay, we're going to talk specifically about the five outcomes that will impact the market as a result of whatever is actually going to be announced at 2 p.m. And we're going to work through about five of these scenarios to help you develop a strategy of how you can actually turn this rate decision into money in your trading account. Let's roll. So outcome number one, initial reaction is always not your true reaction. If you remember that this afternoon, you'll position yourself for success. So initial reaction could be such that market will initially spike up higher. But it's not the initial reaction that makes you the money, guys. It's the follow through reaction. So the importance on trading this is to observing what the initial reaction is and trading it in exactly the opposite direction, meaning that the initial reaction higher could be followed by a sell-off into the close or the sell-off into the next day, meaning tomorrow, Thursday, the 20th. So understanding this is going to help you properly position yourself in the way that you're structuring your trade. So, in other words, don't buy options ahead of the announcement. Don't do that, again, because the initial reaction is not going to be the true reaction. In 90% of the cases, especially with the type of the market environment, has been showing us some certain patterns and behaviors that we typically keep track as a part of our 13 market moves formula. It gives us certain sequences and things that we look at certain patterns and combining the probabilities. Point out to the fact there is a very high probability that the initial reaction, if it's higher, it's going to be sold off. And if it's going to be lower, it will be bought. So just remember this for now. So this is how it's actually going to look. So potentially we could spike all the way to 29.50. This would be our ideal entry on the put side. So if the initial reaction is higher, it's actually going to make sense to buy puts because this is likely what's to happen next. And if this is the reaction by 4 p.m., then market is also likely to go lower tomorrow. So remember, if the initial reaction is higher, you don't want to be buying calls. You want to be buying puts. Reaction number two could be market initially is going lower. It's going down, which would be followed by a spike higher into the close and the next day. So here's how it's actually going to look. So we could see something like this. S&P futures, when I give you these numbers, guys, it's all about S&P futures. So that's what we're talking about here. Uh, for those of you who are today, Ameritrade accounts, back uh, forward slash ES is the abbreviation for what we keep track of. So basically, you're going to see something like this. The market is going to spike lower, sharply lower. And partially, we believe the move lower can come very, very harsh and rapid, kind of like fast and furious move lower. is because the markets have been dragging for the last few days higher on very, very low volume. So those market participants have been waiting to jump in if uh, they don't like exactly what they hear. They're going to sell. And this sell-off could come rather, rather fiercely, rather, rather fast. If we hit this level of 2870, would be a buyer of calls in this particular type of scenario. So based off what we're observing in the market, we can summarize it all in the chart and action of Adobe. Adobe is a high growth name and very similar trades to how the FANG stocks trade. And what we're observing is the only reason to buy these high potential growth stocks over the last 10 years has been the fact that they continue to grow. Well, here's Adobe yesterday after hours. It said, well, we don't think we're going to grow as fast anymore. What does the market do? They buy the dip. So initially the response is lower and then they buy the heck out of it. Makes sense? Absolutely not. Typically on such news, the stock would be sold off. No questions asked, period. Should have been a huge drop in the shares of Adobe instead they're buying the hell out of these shares. So when we see crazy, unreasonable behavior in the markets like this, it tells us that, look, a market may initially spike lower, but does not mean it's going to continue going lower because market participants are buying stuff 
on the news that they would typically sell the market. So keep that in mind. The initial sell-off is not necessarily going to show you that the sell-off is going to continue. So the initial spike lower on volume, okay, we have a very high probability that they will come in and they will actually buy this dip. And there's tons of examples there, guys. Uh, you know, there's divergency in the treasury yields. Why are the treasury yields going high? Clearly, if we're headed for a cut, they would not be going higher. They would be going lower, right? So just, guys, there's like a hundred different things out there for the purpose of this video. I'm trying to keep it nice, brief, short, and sweet. Uh, let's move on. So the next outcome is initial reaction is up and it continues up. Uh, clearly, that would make most of the traders happy. That actually probably like one of my least favorite um, the case is here, but here's the case for that. We're going to glance at the chart. Ultimately, this is how it's going to look, right? But here's the chart of S&P so far. This is the daily chart we're looking at. And the daily chart actually gives us a clear pattern, what's known as reverse head and shoulders. So it's actually a really nice setup, at least giving us a probability that we could hit, you know, 2950. But just hitting the 2950 is not good enough. Um, we want the market reaction to be so positive in this third outcome that it would actually get us above 2950 on strong volume and it is only when that condition is triggered it would be reasonable to actually jump in and buy calls so i know a lot of guys out there that trade spy calls so don't be buying spy guys unless we're breaking above 2950 on strong volume here's why a lot of these if we take a look at a weekly chart of s p a lot of these longer time frame charts there will be more of a stronger indication of what's actually going to come and in a way we do have just highly bullish a lot of these especially when the market is trying to take this level the old time high now four times we're getting we're getting to try the fourth attempt at trying to make a market trying to take out market highs that were previously established over the last two years so typically, this would be pretty tough to pull off. However, this chart pattern is very strong. And so we just don't want to be too early to the party. Um, so we don't want to be too late. We don't want to be buying the market when it's at 3,000 points, right? So we want to basically time this area of 2950, 2960. And when we do get a strong break above that, that's when we want to actually come in and buy the call. Just to be clear, we're not buying any calls if the initial reaction is higher. Clearly, in, in the um, outcome number two, we said if the market initially drops and hits the level of 28.70, we do want to buy calls there. So not to confuse the two outcomes here, right? So in this outcome, we're expecting the move to go higher and continue higher, but we don't want to just buy the initial move higher. We want to make sure that it's going to be a sustainable move. And the only way to know whether it's going to be a sustainable move if we get a solid breakout above this 29.50, 29.60 level. So the simple strategy, guys, again, is buy spy calls only, only. That's the condition. If it breaks strongly above 29.50, 29.60 on strong volume. Okay, outcome number four, guys, initially down and continues down. Yeah, it can actually take place. This is roughly how it's going to look in the chart. So initial move down. Then the market sort of going to rethink, whoa, hold on. Maybe we're overreacting a little bit. Maybe we should be buying the dip. Whoa, whoa. And then it just continues the drop. Now, this actually does not have a very high probability considering that all over the board they are buying the damn dip so we're not assigning a huge probability to that and probability five is uh, roughly unchanged muted reaction to the federal reserve report we're not assigning a high probability to that too because i think uh people that have been staying on the sidelines they will come in and they will contribute to the markets moving fiercely after the report decision comes out so with that, this uh, we're not expecting the market to do what it's been doing, basically in the expectation of this announcement. It's sort of been doing this over the course of the last few days. So we're not really expecting that. Now, here's the deal. For those of you that are still not convinced that the Federal Reserve will not cut the rate today, here's a couple of reasons why there's a 99% probability they're not going to cut the rates today. So a couple of things is, is this. Um, it would be wise for the Federal Reserve, with all the pressure that's being done onto them from Trump administration and Trump himself, um, in 
December, they did not back down, right? They didn't cut the rate. They just said, hey, we're going to raise this last time in December. We're going to keep things on hold for a while. So here's the key data. The data, economic data, besides the last jump report, is actually pretty decent. So uh, we are not expecting them to make any rush decisions until clearly the first event is the G20 summit, which is going to take place on June 20th, 29th, 2019. So until that is out of the way, and we kind of get a good idea what's going to happen with the uh, trade talks. They're not likely to make a decision because um, the second event they're going to be paying very close attention is going to be Friday, July the 5th, which is going to be a very nice, interesting setup, guys, because, hey, it's right after July the 4th. So we're going to have a lot of sleepy people still having Coronas on the beach, uh, possibly open up their laptops on July the 5th. And boy, that day could be interesting. Man, mark this one on your calendar. It's going to be some trading opportunities there. Okay, so until these two events are out of the way, we shouldn't see them make any decisions, uh, at least till July 30th, 31st, 2019, uh, when the next Federal Reserve meeting is going to take place. So there's just to add a little fire to the equation here. Question of the day. Why did Trump reignite the hopes of China deal 24 hours before Federal Reserve is about to make its decision? Coincidence? Clearly, in our view, it is no coincidence. Uh, Trump knows there will be no rate cut today. And he's trying to put some steam to just maintain these markets at these levels um, and trying to basically... Me and Chi are best friends. We have a great relationship talk. Look, every one of those comments he's made in the past actually was a pop and drop type trade. So, so far the market is steady. But uh, if we combine this situation of Trump clearly understand there is no rate cut, even though he's trying to apply all the pressure he can, poor Powell, and uh, he's still standing strong. So I think Powell will remain standing strong. There will be no rate cut. And the fact that Trump is actually trying to add some positivity to kind of sustain the markets uh, right at the time before he knows uh, something is going to be announced that the markets are not uh, going to be highly in favor of. Um, so this really good setup for the uh, type 2 outcome where the market initially uh, spikes lower and then it gains ground and reverses uh, later. So here's expect the rate cut uh, in July meeting or September meeting if two uh, circumstances take place. Number one, tariffs are announced an additional 300 billion of Chinese goods, which currently Trump is trying to make everybody believe that's not going to take place. But actually, the high probability of these tariffs announced is greater than the probability of making some kind of deal. So that's uh, event one. And event two is the job report on July 5th. If employment number is actually weak, that would actually have a situation where we have two weak job numbers back to back. And that could actually get Powell to consider doing something with the rates. Now, this um, rate cut typically could be viewed as positive in the markets, uh, but at the same time, it could be regarded as uh, actual admission of deteriorating economy and recession on the horizon. So which one is it going to be? The history points to the fact that first rate cut after a cycle of rate hikes is initially positive for the markets, but the follow-through, right, the further cuts and the magnitude of the cuts could be highly negative. We've seen this in the 80s. We've seen this in 2008. So the first rate high, a rate cut is typically regarded as positive. The following rate cuts can definitely tank the market. So how to trade this? Uh, well, typically, typically, the easy trade is when rates are going lower. When rates are going lower, and that is us making an assumption that rates will go lower in July, at the end of July or September, you would want to short the dollar and you would want to buy gold. Okay, so nice and simple, short dollar, buy gold. However, that is the typical trade. And what we could actually see is the opposite of that. You would not want to short the dollar because 
Some other currencies are getting weaker in relation to the dollar. So this may not be an ideal time. And even if they do announce that, hey, there is a high probability of rate cut in July or September. So shorting the dollar is really not the best trade. Buying gold uh, futures probably has been the most talked trade um, on television uh, in the last uh, month. And uh, similarly to our analysis of S&P futures, we don't recommend buying gold. We actually want to short gold today. Yes, highly controversial trade. So more than that, more than the specifics of the gold trade in just a second. Now, value typically does outperform growth stocks in this type of environment. But this environment right now, as crazy as things are moving and they're buying dips and stuff that they typically would just get rid of and sell like crazy. Uh, what we're observing in this current market environment highly resembles the market environment of December 2017 and January 2018 when things just kept going higher and higher and higher. So recent similarity in this market environment actually suggests that buying highly speculative stocks like the FANG stocks, Netflix, Amazon, etc. could be a very good trade for a short while. Um, could be followed by a huge drop because we still believe that the huge drop could materialize by the end of the summer. So, and bubble-like stocks. Hey guys, we've already seen this. I think this trade has already been played out by the time we we're trying to put these slides together. BYD was trading uh, still in the 130s, 140s. So we caught it um, all the way to the 200 level and uh, we transitioned into puts on that. But, you know, highly speculative stocks like bubble-like stocks, your hot stocks that everybody talks about, generally those do. Um, very well in this type of market environment if you compare this to December 2017, January 2018. So uh, with that, let's actually examine this simple gold trade that anybody can put together. So highly controversial as it is, it's actually uh, highly simple to put together. So um, looking at shorting gold, utilizing gold futures, we're actually going to buy puts on gold, 1350 Puts. As we mentioned, there's multiple divergences, multiple things that point to the fact that gold, to the contrary of the general belief right now, it's a very crowded trade. Everybody wants to buy gold. We're saying, well, hold on, not so fast. We do believe gold is going to go significantly higher to $1,400, $1,500, $1,700, $2,000 over the course of the next 24 uh, months to three years. However, the immediate, like if you guys are day traders, swing trader, you need to figure out what's going to happen today. Where is this thing going? So the answer to that would be, I think gold is actually going to drop. Yes, because there is going to be no rate cut today. Uh, possibly going to be an announcement. There's going to be no rate cut till December. So short term, gold is actually going to drop. Once it drops to a level of 1300, 1320, that's where we want to start buying calls. So we don't want to start buying gold calls now. Uh, thinking that the breakout is going to take place today. And here's why. So gold has a history. If we take a look at the uh, multiple charts, multiple uh, time frame charts on gold, this 1350 level is just a crucial, crucial level for gold. And every time it's gotten there in the past, it has failed to break out. Um, also, if you uh, are familiar with our charts, diverge, of course, we clearly go a lot into detail how to read some of these candles and so on. So if you are trying to learn more, guys, click the links below. Um, get uh, the access to, to the course and learn this information. You can become a better trader. But bottom line, there's a lot of bearish reversal candles here, which lead us to believe that short-term gold is going to be unable to break above this 1350, 1360 level. And the parallel we're trying to make earlier with the markets, basically we want to buy calls if we get a clear break above this 2950, 2960 level. The well, same would be true for gold. We only want to buy gold um, in large amounts if it breaks above this 1350, 1360, 1370 level because once it breaks above that level, the move higher to 1500 could be rather quick. So until then, we're going to continue bet that there's going to be a pullback. There's going to be a pullback back to 1300, 1320. Could be a $20 pullback in gold after the announcement today. So um, that's the simple trade, highly controversial, but highly simple trade. Guys, just remember as you're trading today, we've broken down the multiple scenarios. There's five of them. Some of them clearly we spend a little bit more time on to give you an indication of which one actually has the high probability. So to review this, 
It's important that you grasp the main concept here is you want to trade in the opposite direction of the initial reaction because that's what will give you the highest probability outcome. So if the market's initially dropping, you want to come in and you want to buy calls at certain levels indicated in the video. If you want to play the call side, you're better off uh, if the market initially pops higher, you're better off wait until we clearly break above these key levels in the market because that's going to give you a high probability trade um, if the market initially uh, pops and begins to sell off clearly you want to start coming in and buying some puts so watch out the initial reaction is try sure your trade on the opposite side of that if you guys want to learn more about trading options uh, 13 markets move formula visit tradingoptionslive.com simply click some of the links below this video get more information so you can make this year your best trading year ever